Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz, and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're playing a map called Street Stuck by Robert Cardona. This is a map for Half-Life 2 Episode 2, and it's fairly short, but it does a really good job of uh, its visuals, so we can have a long look at those as we play the map. Let's get going. So I kind of want to use this map as an example and to uh, kind of dispel some myths that perhaps newer modders have that they have to have you know all new textures, new models and all this kind of expertise to create a great looking map and uh, to those people I'd really suggest they play this map because it uses completely stock assets from Half-Life 2 there's no new textures, no new models, no new anything it's just a map file and yet it is one of the most beautiful City 17 theme maps I've ever seen. So uh, I think that is really important because I see so many people that are like, oh I can't model, I can't texture, all I know how to do is map, you know, I'll never be able to make quote unquote competitive looking visuals with kind of, they play mods like uh, Mission Improbable or Minerva and they see all this new content and they're like, wow that looks incredible, I can't do, I can't do that. And at the end of the day it really doesn't matter. What matters is the kind of what you do with the tools you're given, not not what kind of new assets you can create. They certainly help, but you know basically the, the Valve stock assets are incredibly good quality anyway, as they should be, so you really shouldn't worry about things like that. Just worry about what you're presenting to the player on the screen. If it looks good then your job is done. So as you can see here, we start out in this kind of abandoned apartment complex. Uh, there's some interesting kind of ambient music going on here, this kind of swelling up and down rhythm. Uh, I hesitate to call it music, but it sets a nice tone for the mod. Uh, this area is perhaps a bit barren in terms of sound effects. You know, there's all these fantastic uh, visuals going on everywhere. The sound is perhaps a bit lacking in this mod. That's a criticism you could level at it. But it's great to see just the fantastic attention to detail absolutely everywhere. It really does set a new bar for kind of uh, visual detail in a City 17 theme map. And again, like I was just talking about, it's great that it just uses stock assets absolutely everywhere. He's just been very, very creative with the brushwork. There are a couple of areas where it just screams like I couldn't think of anything detailed to put here, so I just you know, carved up some floor panels on the floor and <laughs> stuff like that. It's, it's funny if you get, if you go back for like older games, there's like there's crates, then there's pipes, then there's like broken flooring. <laughs> kind of like these giant cliches in level design, just to add a little bit of extra detail. For the most part, this map avoids that, or it just adds things like that where they are appropriate. So it's not too bad. But yeah, it's just great. Uh, just looking at the walls, as yeah, I, I talk a lot about silhouettes in maps because uh, a lot of Half-Life 2 maps I see they just kind of use giant cubes and say this is a building because it has a building texture on it. When uh, there's just so much more you can do. And again, this map's a great example of that. There's just buildings absolutely everywhere with tons of detail, kind of little balconies, windows, all kinds of little props spread around on them. One of the simplest uh, things you can do to just break up the silhouette of a building is just use multiple layers of textures on it. So you see here you've got like this concrete foundation, then you've got the kind of plastered walls up above. Then at the top you've perhaps got a little bit of trim before the roof starts. It's a really d decent way to create a kind of outline for your building. And then from there it's just a case of adding in all the different windows and balconies and all these little rivets and details and things like that to break up the silhouette. I think that's the most important thing. 
you just have a big cube as a building then it's not really casting any interesting shadows that the silhouettes are just very flat and boring you'll see here once we get out into the main city street the author does just a fantastic job of adding just little things that I suppose you could call it greebling in a way uh, greebling is a term used in the uh, visual effects industry where especially in science fiction things like spaceships and space stations have all these kind of like little lumps and details on it which probably don't really serve any practical purpose it's just there to break up the silhouette and make make the sides look interesting create a lot of visual noise and detail so you can see here just even the building in front of us as we come out onto the street there's just lots of like little bits of uh, outstretching trim lots of windows that are recessed into the wall you can see here you've got the little uh, awnings over the windows which cast some interesting shadows down onto the building itself then here you've got like these destroyed buildings with multiple layers of uh, debris going into them which looks really really nice and then you take it a step further I think the, the best way to kind of build kind of uh, lived in space is to make all the buildings, build them in the editor absolutely pristine and then just kind of pretend that something is smashed into the side of it and then just model that how it would impact with the building and all the little debris it would create as it fall, fell through and all this kind of stuff. This map does a good job on that as well, there's some really interesting details in it, we just kind of break up uh, the city street, like crashed cars and things like that. So you'll notice here you've got like the, the pavement on the floor is broken, the curb is kind of sticking out, there's a hole in the wall with all kinds of debris. Yeah, and it's another really great uh, tip is that if, if you really want to create a kind of feeling of an environment being lived in and unique, every building being unique, just, just grab a load of photo reference of uh, buildings just uh, you know, hit up Google Images or whatever your favourite image search engine is, and just just save save yourself a whole folder full of photo reference of you know building streets. What I tend to do if, if I'm building a location that I want to look realistic, I'll just search the internet for just a crap load of photo reference for things like this. And even if you just take one little detail from each photo, you can just end up you know, mushing it all together into your level and it just creates a really nice feeling of it being lived in. Even here you've got like little bullet holes in the wooden boards there. Just fantastic attention to detail all the way through. From a gameplay point of view, the, the map is kind of standard. It doesn't really do anything fantastically well. The encounters are, you know, they're fun, but they're fairly basic, kind of very standard Half-Life 2 fare. Uh, there's a couple of issues that annoyed me, things like uh, things that look like they should be usable, not doing anything, and uh, the age-old problem I have with a lot of Half-Life 2 maps where, you know, th things uh, just don't work as they should in the Half-Life world main culprit in this map is things like wooden wooden beams barring a door and those wooden beams being uh, unbreakable. Generally whenever you see wooden beams in Half-Life 2 it's they are always breakable. It's another example, that kind of red valve wheel on the wall, it's, it's just a visual detail, it doesn't actually do anything. I mean, I, I know I always nitpick, nitpick about things like this, but uh, I, I think it's important to create a, a very strong and coherent visual language in game levels so that people understand what what's important in the maps, what isn't, what's just visuals, and what is uh, actually important for gameplay. It gets muddied a lot in a lot of custom maps. I love all the kind of individual brickwork that's been modelled here, it's really nice. 
And again, it's just a simple thing you can do instead of just having a square hole in the wall or using a, one of the provided valve models for kind of wall holes. Just build it yourself manually out of detail brushes. Sure, it takes a little while, but you get a nice kind of custom effect. It feels like it's a custom model, but you can just do it in the editor with brushes. It's no problem. And we come to the end of this level as we just uh, annihilate these combined soldiers. So yeah, it's very very short, but uh, I think it's a great example of what can be achieved if if you only know how to use the editor. If you're not a modeler or a texture, then uh. That is no excuse for not creating beautiful levels, as you can see here. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and uh, I will see you next time.